In this lecture, we're going to go over system integration, which is what happens when we put all of the individual components that we've been studying together. It's a large part of engineering is we creatively combine components. For example, a vapor power plant, which is used in power generation, seen to the right, is a boiler, a turbine, a condenser, and a pump, which is basically two heat exchangers, a pump, and a turbine. We're going to go over an example of we have some industrial discharge process discharging 2 times 10 to the 5 cubic feet per minute of gaseous combustion products at 400 degrees Fahrenheit and 1 ATM. A proposed system for utilizing the combustion products combines a heat recovery steam generator with a turbine. At steady state, the combustion products exit the steam generator at 260 degrees Fahrenheit and 1 ATM. A separate stream of water enters at 40 PSI and 102 degrees Fahrenheit with a mass flow rate of 275 pounds per minute. At the exit of the turbine, the pressure is 1 PSI and the quality is 93%. Heat transfer from the outer surfaces of the steam generator and the turbine can be ignored, as can changes in kinetic and potential energies. There's no significant pressure drop for the water flowing through the steam generator. The combustion products can be modeled as an ideal gas. We want to determine the power developed by the turbine. The temp inlet temperature of the turbine and the the work developed by the turbine if we know the cost of electricity and how long this turbine runs for. So we know we are operating at steady state. We have our mass flow rate 1 is equal to our mass flow rate of 2. We have our mass flow rate of 3 is equal to our mass flow rate of 5. Note we don't need 0.4 at this point as it is internal to the boundary that we have chosen. We have our energy balance where we have 0 is equal to Q minus W. So there's no heat transfer, there's no kinetic or potential. Energy changes, so we have our work or power is equal to our mass flow rate 1 times the change in enthalpy for our steam generator plus our mass flow rate of our air for our for our water of our system. So this side is air and this side is water. So H1 at 400 degrees Fahrenheit, H1 is equal to 206 BTUs per pound, and at 260, H2 is equal to 172.39. For state 3, we have 
My pressure is equal to 40 PSI. T set is equal to 267.26. Our temperature is less than T set. So we're going to approximate H3 is HF, which is 70 BTUs per pound. And then we have state 5 which is stated as two phase um, so when we H5 is equal to 69.74 0 So we still need our mass flow rate. So our mass flow rate run is equal to AB over our specific volume. And since it is an ideal gas, we can replace our specific volume with our ideal gas law. So we're going to have 2 times 10 to the 5 feet cubed per minute times 14.7 pounds per inch squared divided by 1545 over 28.95 foot pounds Rankin times 860 degrees Rankin fix my units <clears throat> So our work is equal to, again, our mass flow rate 1 times H1 minus H2 is our mass flow rate of 3 times H3 minus H5, which is equal to 2, 2, 6 times 206.4. 46 minus 172.39. So our work is equal to four thousand. Sorry. 49,610 BTUs per minute. To find the temperature at T4, um, we know that P3 is equal to P4 because it says that there is no change in pressure across our heat exchanger we need a second property and we can use h4 we want to get h4 by doing an energy balance on just the heat exchanger so we have zero is equal to m dot 1 times h1 minus h2 plus m dot 3 is equal to h3 minus h4 so we get h4 is equal to h3 plus m dot 1 over m dot 3 times h3 minus h4 sorry that's H1 minus H2, which is equal to 70 plus so H4 is equal to 1.
So we're going to interpolate table A4 at 40 PSI. We get T4 is equal to 354 degrees Fahrenheit. And the last thing it asks is our cost. Our cost is equal to our power times time times money. Get my cost to be eight hundred and two thousand dollars per year. That's it for chapter four. In our next lecture, we will start chapter five.